But before we begin, I want to welcome you from Arts Whistler. It's always great to have these kind of uh, meaningful social or social, it is social, it's Whistler, but community-based uh, meetings in here. It's great to see so many people. I swear we are going to start charging and hosting all candidate meetings three times a year. Um, and if we open the bar, we wouldn't even need to do fundraising. So uh, we'll see where that goes. Uh, but we're very pleased to be supporting this evening with, of course, the Peak and the Whistler Chamber. I'd like to thank Peak News Magazine as a co-sponsor of tonight's meeting and note that it's National Newspaper Week, a week in which we celebrate the importance of journalism, local and community journalism, and its role in an active and healthy democracy. Newspapers matter now more than ever. Please share your thoughts on tonight's All Candidates meeting using the hashtags Newspapers Matter kind of ran together, uh, now more than ever, to show your support for local, trustworthy, and factual news. Um, and how true, so everything you need to know about the candidates is showing up in the peak, just so you know. Uh, and the Worcester Chamber of Commerce, uh, great that they, they host this and put it all together with our team. They're in the business of making business easy. By nurturing diverse, innovative business community, they work to create a healthy resort economy and elevate Whistler's business. With over 700 members, they are the voice of business in Whistler and the steward of the resort-wide customer service solution, the Whistler Experience, which has trained over 22,000 people since 2014. Uh, quite remarkable. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the candidates and then we will get into their opening remarks. Uh, we have them seated in alphabetical order by last name. So on my far right is Robert Doug Bepp with the People's Party of Canada. Uh, Robert does go by Doug, so he is Doug. Uh, Terry Grimwood is beside him. He is running as an independent. Next to him is Gordon Jeffrey of the Rhinoceros Party. Next to him, we have Gabrielle Lauren of the Conservative Party, then Dana Taylor of the Green Party, Patrick Weiler from the Liberal Party, and Judith Wilson we have an APB out on. So uh, <laughs> she will join us when she joins us. So let me tell you how this evening is going to go. If you saw the national leaders debate in English, it will be nothing like that. <laughs> How it will work is in the opening remarks, each candidate will be given two minutes for their opening presentation. Um, the speaking order has been drawn randomly. We will call them up in that specific order. From there, uh, the peak will ask two questions and the Worcester Chamber will ask two questions and then it is opened up to public questions. There are three ways you can ask a question. One, you can step up to the microphones here. You can uh, provide a written question at the back on both sides at the top of the staircase is pen and paper and a staff member from the chamber who will bring that down to us. And thirdly, you can ask using Slido, which is an online uh, sort of question management uh, app that you can use on your phone. We've used it at many different chamber events and all candidates events. So we'll show you uh, what that's about when we move on to that period. I want to let you know when you ask a question, it needs to be directed to one of the candidates. So decide who you would like to ask. They will have two minutes to respond. If you would like to have someone else uh, of the all candidates respond as a, with a rebuttal, they will have one minute. You do not have to ask for someone to rebut. You definitely need to direct it to one person, but if you want to hear from two, you have that option. We want this night to be directed by you, so you have the opportunity to hear from who you want to hear from, so you can vote uh, more informed. So that's how that will work. You have 30 seconds to ask your question. Any of you who get up in public speak, 30 seconds is a long time. And uh, you may, if you've been to other all candidates meetings with me, our position is, it's enough time to ask a question, it's not enough time to elaborate on your own platform or bring in backstories or anything else, because those of us who wanted to come tonight and make long speeches or speeches at all should be sitting up here. So we're gonna respect that. And it also gives you more, we hope to have time to take as many questions as we possibly can from you. So the faster we do it all, the more information we can gain. Um, let's see, I think that's really, that's the heart of it. It's pretty straightforward. 
The candidates will also have a minute and a half at the end. Each of them will provide final remarks. That'll be a minute 30. Uh, when they, if they reach their speaking time, whether it was their two minutes or one minute, their mics are cut off. This is about providing a level playing field for everyone. If for some reason uh, they continue to speak, they've been told this as well. Uh, Arts Whistler is very proud that quite recently we, we were deeded a gift from the Lil Watt Nation. This. So whether the mic's off or not, if they keep talking, I get to drum. So. It's, it's quite unlikely, actually. So this is what we're doing. Um, so that's it. And uh, you know, we, we want this to be respectful and civil and informative. And that way, it won't be anything like the national leaders debate. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the uh, speaking order that we drew from. And starting at, us off with his opening statement will be Patrick Weiler of the Liberal Party. Patrick. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Weiler. I'm the Liberal candidate for our West Vancouver Sunshine Coast Sea to Sky Country riding. Uh, it's great to be back up in here in Whistler. Uh, I've been coming up to Whistler since I was three years old to ski and snowboards. Uh, my father had a, was a president of a company that managed condos up here. So I've been coming up here my whole life, and it's great to be back. Um, I grew up in between West Vancouver and Seashelts. Um, my mother was a si uh, city councillor in Seashelts. And um, so I, I spent every second weekend on the coast. From a young age, I've really seen the value of, of public service and the importance of making a difference in our community. Uh, personally, I come from a legal background. I've practiced primarily in environmental and Aboriginal law. And uh, I've worked for small businesses, uh, local small businesses, and small businesses throughout the riding. Uh, I've, done, I've done a lot of international work as well. I've worked for large international organizations like the United Nations, and I've worked in about 20 countries and um, worked for many more countries with developing economies from afar. The type of work that I do is to bring diverse interests together, things like NGOs, businesses, communities, First Nations, to solve really complex issues like managing an international river, like bringing into place more modern mining policies, or to uh, come to agreements on how to fight, fight uh, climate change. So as your MP, my focus is gonna be on doing the same thing for you, bringing together the community, finding, com finding solutions to complex problems. Um, I'm running for the Liberal Party because the Liberal Party is the only party that has a plan to grow the economy while protecting the environment and to make life affordable for, for all of us. Um, and there's, there's much to do and um, I'm, I'm running so we can tackle these issues. And I'm running to, to work with and for you to be your voice in Ottawa, um, to make sure that, that you have a say in the decisions that are made and to make sure that you can benefit from the programs that we have. Thanks, Patrick. And as they say, as the uh, we we drew randomly and coming in hot in number two is Judith Wilson. I'm a real believer in just in time. Let me do it. Let me do it. There we go. Okay. I'm a real believer in just in time. So I am Judith Wilson, and I'm your NDP candidate in this riding. And I'm really pleased to be able to be here tonight to offer to the people of this constituency a real difference from what you've seen in the past. The New Democratic Party is something that's part of my DNA, it's part of my family history, it's something that I believe in strongly. I'm someone who thinks of themselves as a person who puts social justice issues as part of my everyday life, and it's something that I'd like to do if I'm sent to Ottawa by yourselves. When I was a young person, um, the world was in the grip of the fear about the Armageddon that was going to come from the nuclear holocaust. And I got involved with the NDP because they were fighting in Ottawa for the things that I was fighting as a student on the streets. Today, we have students demonstrating everywhere, along with people my age and your age, for climate change, our action on climate change. And I think when we look at what our options are today, the options aren't for the status quo. The options aren't for sticking with what we're used to. The options are for picking policies and political parties 
that are going to make a difference. So I say to you that if we are going to address the climate change issues that are before us, we need to do it differently than what we have seen so far. The New Democratic Party believes strongly in climate change and it is part of the approach that is taken by a party that puts people first, that regards people and the environment is inextricably linked and that the challenge of putting forward... You got two minutes, there you go, we're out. Okay, all right. Uh, that's just what we got to do. Uh, all right. That's uh, number three, Terry Grimwood. Go. My name's Terry Grimwood. I'm an independent candidate. For the last two years, I've been building a new party called Canada Fresh. I've been across the country three times this year, and uh, we're a, a nonpartisan party, and we feel that uh, all the parties have to work together. Canada deserves better than what we have right now. I don't feel that existing parties have the ideas, and I have some really good ideas. I love this theater. They need more of these types of facilities. This is a beautiful architectural um, piece here. I just, I just love it. I studied science and economics at UBC and public finance and diplomacy. And as a university student, I was elected twice to the North Vancouver City Council. Five months after leaving council, I opened my first of many racquetball squash and tennis facilities and ice rinks. Shortly after starting that, I, I started uh, designing and building yachts, and I still do that today. I've been a licensed builder on the Sunshine Coast for a dozen years, and I've now stopped. But um, Canada Fresh, I went to Outremont to run there, bonjour, and I, um, I went to Brockville, Ontario to run there, and I ended up running in Burnaby South in February. So I, I've tried to get the exposure and listen to the people. We have some really good platforms, and I'll get an opportunity through the evening to tell you more. But um, I'm really happy to be here, and I'm, I'm just thrilled this is a fabulous turnout. This is one of the best I've been exposed to in, in this campaign. Thank you for, for taking the time to come out. Okay, Thanks, Terry. Yes, Whistler brings it. That's what they do. We don't do Netflix, we do all candidates meetings. That's what we do here. Uh, next up, we have Doug Bebb. And you do them very well. It's the most professionally produced uh, all the candidates meeting I've been at. Thank you to the Whistler Chamber for hosting in such a, a fine fashion. Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Douglas Bebb. I come before you today as your candidate for the People's Party of Canada. The PPC was formed a little over a year ago and is now running 315 confirmed candidates right across Canada. We are the fastest growing party in Canadian history. I'm a professional mechanical engineer and MBA, both degrees from UBC. I'm an outdoor enthusiast. I've worked and traveled widely in Canada and elsewhere, and I hold a private pilot's license. I entered politics in April because the opportunity presented by the People's Party is rare and must be embraced. For too long, Canada has been controlled by special interest groups. Legacy parties have been corrupted to the point where real change is not possible working within the system. An outside party is the only solution. A People's Party will protect free speech and all other freedoms guaranteed to Canadians by our Constitution. The freedoms of inquiry, of conscience, of expression underpin the Canadian tradition of liberal democracy. Their ongoing erosion represents a direct attack upon that democracy. John Diefenbaker said it best, I am a Canadian, a free Canadian, free to speak without fear, free to worship God in my own way, free to stand for what I think right, free to oppose what I believe wrong, free to choose those who govern my country, the heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all mankind. To uphold our heritage of freedom 
Canada must remain strong. This includes financial strength and balanced budgets and low national debt. The PPC is the only party committed to a balanced budget in two years. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. We'll now hear from Dana Taylor. Good evening, Whistler. Thanks to the Whistler Chamber, the Peak, and Whistler Arts. As a citizen, I believe that I have responsibilities. I have been an activist and advocate most of my life. I've identified problems and sought practical solutions to make things right. I'm running on my record of four decades of public and private service to improve the lives of people and communities. My work to create parks and public gardens, preserving house sound from polluters, creating business opportunities for green, clean businesses, creating legislation that improves lives and provides security for people. To some, this election is about preserving power, choices of political parties that seek power to keep commitments to their friends in the foreign-owned fossil fuel companies rather than securing the lives of Canadians and our future. The Bank of Canada identifies the expanding climate emer emergency as a key threat to economic security. The Green Party has an ambitious plan of hope to stop the insanity of continuing on this path to catastrophe and uh, our plan will stop making things worse by stopping fossil fuel production, cancelling pipelines, fracking LNG plants, by restoring the carbon sink with new trees, by electrifying the country with a renewable energy grid, transitioning workers to new good paying jobs that, and, and green economy that exist at five times the number of jobs in fossil fuel. The legacy parties reward their friends. The Green Party protects Canadians with a clean, safe and secure future. I encourage you to vote for a clean and secure future for all of humankind. These times require real leadership and political will. There's simply no time to drag our feet, no time to be timid. Imagine something better and together we can make that happen. I ask you to trust me with your vote on October 21st. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dana. We now pass it over to Gabrielle Lauren. Hello, everyone. Firstly, I'd like to thank the Whistler Chamber for putting on this event and inviting me here today, and also thank my colleagues from the other parties for participating in this democracy. My name is Gabrielle Lauren, and I represent the Conservative Party. I immigrated to Canada at the age of four, and we settled in West Vancouver. That was in 1965. I was raised in this riding. I raised my family in this riding, and I started and still have my business in the riding. I'm a charter professional accountant by trade and a small business owner by heart. I grew my accounting firm out of my parents' house to now 24 of us in two locations. And I volunteer part-time for the most recently for the Lionsgate Hospital Foundation and the West Vancouver Chamber of Commerce. I also teach tax and financial literacy to students and small businesses. I'm running because I want to ensure that you have the same opportunities I had to get ahead and be successful. I want to leave our country, our community, just a little bit better than how I found it. I understand the real world impact of debt and deficits that are issued by our government and how they affect us here at home. I'm dedicated to conserving the environment and ensuring we implement a transition plan for renewable energy, green technology, and I'm sure that together we can tackle any social issue. Ladies and gentlemen, this 2019 election is a change election. We want honest, common sense action, results, and accountability, not only from our members of parliament, but also from our government. One that helps every Canadian get ahead. Thank you for being here tonight, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Gabrielle. And last but not least, Gordon Jeffrey. How stupid do these major parties think we are? There's an old saying that insanity is trying the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And I, for one, am no longer buying what they're selling. They send their sharpest tongued devils to uh, what their soulless market research tells them we might accept. And frankly, I feel they're insulting our intelligence. 
You're gonna hear more of the same old from the same old tonight, gussied up with a few new best bells and whistles, but on closer inspection, you'll find those bells and whistles are made of the same old manure. Why is it only in an election year that these uh, legacy parties seem to suddenly care about the things that matter to us lowly commoners? Simply put, they do not. Let me tell you a few things I think never go out of style, regardless of how far we are to the next election. Accountability, truth and justice, honesty and conviction, the courage to call a spade a spade, and the will of the people. Proven liars, hypocrites, charlatans, everyone. But Gord, you may say, this is a fresh face, promising uh, uh, this lovely manure and address. Well, let me ask you this. Have they thrown their hat in and placed their allegiance with known liars and hypocrites? I don't believe in guilt by association, far from it. But if you willingly join, then aid and abet uh, a fundamentally corrupt organization that takes part willingly in the legalized bribery that plagues our system, then to you I say no more. Uh, they're, try they're running to tr sit in ivory towers using ill-gotten gains to dine on filet mignon while they feed the rest of us baloney. I'm running to represent you, the people, your wants, your needs, not to be hired as a paid apologist for the Prime Minister's office. Uh, I want to protect your privacy, rights, and freedoms, all of which are under attack by corporatism run rampant and the politicians they've paid off. The main promise of the Rhino Party used to be that we wouldn't keep any of our promises, but since the Liberal Party has decided to co-opt that promise to the point, <laughs> to the point where we can't com compete, my new promise is, uh, is simply all truth all the time and non-partisan rep... Okay. All right, didn't mean to pull the drum. Um. I'll do my best to stay neutral, but a good punchline's a good punchline, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, uh, so next up, we have the media. I wish I had an echo on that mic. That would have been so cool. Uh, I'd like to invite Claire Ogilvie, editor of Peak News Magazine. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. It's awesome to see a full house. Uh, very uh, important election. Every election is important. So it's great to see you out here. And thank you all the candidates, not just for coming, but for running. Um, you know, it's not easy being on that side of the table. And so thank you very much for doing that. I have to put my glasses on now because I can't see. Um, so as Mo explained, we're going to ask questions, uh, uh, Melissa from the chamber and I, we're going to uh, direct a question to one person and then we're going to ask another candidate uh, to rebut the question as well. So my first question is for Mr. Weiler. I'd uh, like you to please clearly state what actions you would like to see taken to fight climate change. I'd like you to explain how you will help this riding face this issue if elected. And I just want to be very clear, I'm not asking you to lay out your party platform. We've heard that. I'm asking you to tell us what actions you will take on Worcester's behalf. Well, the climate, having an effective response to climate change is the, one of the main reasons I'm running in this election. Um, there's been a lot of hard work that's been done to get to where we are today over the last four years, having a national agreement in the pan-Canadian framework on clean growth and climate change is a great foundation to build on, but we're not there yet. We have a lot of work to do. Um, for me, I, I, have, I come from a, a background where I've worked on climate policy for Tides Canada. It's something that I'm quite committed to work with, with some of the great team that's been assembled by the Liberal Party, including the former head of the Pembeda Institute, who's the chief of staff for Catherine McKenna, um, the leading climate policy activist in Canada, Stephen Gilbo, is also running for the party. Um, I'm really motivated to work with these people and to scale up the efforts that we have so far. Um, uh, some, some of what, what that, those next steps are going to look like is um, building up the clean tech economy. So we're going to cut corporate taxes in half for companies can that are... I, can I just interrupt you? I think most of us have seen a lot of that in the media, yeah. but how does, that, how does that actually impact Whistler? Like sure. what, is, what is that going to do for us? Yeah, well, um, there's huge opportunities in this, in this sector for 
Squamish is taking advantage of it with, with um, uh, carbon engineering. There's an opportunity for businesses in Whistler to take advantage of this. Um, there's a huge trade sector in Whistler. There's a $40,000 no interest loan. I think that's going to be a huge opportunity. There's going to be skills and training programs. I'd like to work to get a lot of that investment here. Um, investments in climate resilient infrastructure. That's something that I'll fight to make sure that we have some of that here. Um, in, in addition to that, um, um, we're going to be planting two billion trees. Uh, that's something that, that um, we're going to have to look at all the places across the country where we can work on that. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to direct uh, the rebuttal to Ms. Lorne, if you could address the same question. Do you want me to repeat it, or are you good? Okay. One of the things that I believe in is that if you march, that doesn't necessarily mean you will take action. I was recently at the Squamish uh, shoreline cleanup with my team, and it was nice to be able to do something, actually do something yourself. I attended the recent Whistler Council meeting where the electric vehicle stations were approved, which was a 50-50 partnership between Whistler and the federal government. I'd love to see that continue, because if we want to get away from fossil fuels, we need to get more electric vehicles that are able to navigate the Sea to Sky Highway. What I'd like to see happen is that we actually move within no less, or sorry, no more than 15 years. But to do that, we have to get people out of their cars. We need transportation. We need to make this economy greener, but we also have to get our tourists here because that is our livelihood. Oh, that, yep. Thank you very much. Um, my second question uh, I'm going to address to Mr. Taylor. Uh, I'm going to have to put my glasses back on. Um, your Mission Possible platform has a significant price tag. While people in Worcester are very concerned about the impacts of climate change, we're also struggling to survive financially. If elected, what will you do in Ottawa to make sure that climate issues are addressed while working to address affordability issues in Whistler? Um, affordability issues impact people everywhere. I've, I've certainly become aware of the ones that are more specific to Whistler, the, particularly the, the gap between uh, those working in the service industry, uh, issues of affordability for housing, transportation, and the like. Uh, the map for action on uh, climate action uh, would have us, whatever, regardless of the number of people or number of Greens elected, uh, promoting a program uh, in, uh, that aligns with the, the, the Green um, Mission Possible Plan. Uh, support for that obviously will be dependent on what we, could, what, what we can get from uh, other parties to move in that direction. Affordability, going back to that for a moment, our housing plan includes uh, a revamp of the national housing strategy, $1.5 billion put into the plan to make housing available on, on a number of levels, looking at co-op, co-housing, and other alternative uh, housing options for that purpose. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, in rebuttal, I'd like to ask the same question to Mr. Weiler. Do you want me to repeat it, or are you okay? I can answer the question. Yep. So I was discussing with Mr. Taylor the Mission Possible platform and asking how you can protect uh, and move towards the climate changes as well as um, working towards affordability issues in Whistler. So I really think the Mission Possible title is a misnomer. Um, it's... It is economically infeasible. The way that the revenue to build up the response to climate change is going to be done by jacking up corporate taxes from 15 to 21 percent. I think that's going to scare off investment. Um, the type of economy we need to develop is going to be focused on the clean economy. We need to bring those type of companies in rather than scare them away. Um, the climate change strategy they have is to be energy self-sufficient, but then also build no new pipelines. So I don't know how we're going to do that and still get our energy to the east coast of Canada. Um, so there's, there's a lot of um, inconsistencies in there with the plan, and I have major fears that it's going to actually um, shrink our economy and make it much more difficult to fight climate change in opposition to this. The, the Liberal plan is to both grow the economy while we're, we're having an effective response to climate change and be able to fund the transition. Thank you very much. Thank you, audience. Over yeah, to the chamber. Yes, I am. Thank you.
Now we'll hear uh, questions from Melissa Pache, CEO of the Worcester Chamber. Thank you, Mo. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's great to see such an amazing term turnout uh, in our community. Um, again, congratulations on kind of stepping forward and uh, positioning yourselves in, in such an amazing format. Um, my first question is for the Liberal candidate, uh, Mr. Weiler. Canada's new tourism sector strategy, creating middle-class jobs, a federal tourism growth strategy, states that by 2025, revenues will reach $128 billion, an increase of 25%, and create 54,000 new jobs, which is an increase of 7%. If, you're, if elected, what will you personally do to move the dial on the temporary foreign workers to support this growth in our community, which is already in a criti critical labour deficit? So I think the, the federal tourism growth strategy is a really good place to start from. Um, there, are, there, are, there is financing there to, um, to fund uh, specific programs in the areas, and I know that's something that the Squamish Lillowat Cultural Center is looking at. Um, there's up to half a million for specific programs. Um, if uh, there's still such a huge labor shortage in Whistler, it's, it's an issue I've heard from talking to a lot of businesses, from hotels that are losing stars because they're unable to serve all meals of a day. This is, this is something that's, that's a longer term issue. We want to make sure we can have those, that labor shortages addressed with, with Canadians. Um, but in the interim, uh, in order to address those needs, it's important to make sure we have people from abroad that can help um, fill those labor shortages. So I think one of the a good place to start for this is just making the response time quicker for those programs. And I know it's something that, that um, Pam Goldsmith-Jones fought really hard to improve, um, but, uh, but it, she, she wasn't able to um, completely reform the program. It's something that I'd be very committed to working to, to reform, to work with the, the Chamber, to work with Tourism Whistler, work with the, the business community here to see what better ways we can, we can fill some of these uh, labour shortages. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Wilson, would you like to rebut? Would you like me to repeat the question? No, I think I've got, I got it. it. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of issue with what um, Mr. Weiler has said to you. I do think that the streamlining of the process is a big part of the process to get it happening quicker. And I do think that there are bureaucratic log jams in place that are stopping things from moving forward as quickly as they need to be. But I think there is another piece to this, and it is making it possible for people to live here. Where are you going to house these people? I think that we need to have a major focus and make sure that whoever is your member of parliament is aggressively going after housing money that will make it possible for people who are working for a living at the wages that we can offer in, this, in these industries to actually live here, and not just in boarding style sort of you know, very short-term kinds of places. And by doing that, we will attract more employees that come from the regular population and there will be less of a need for the foreign workers programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my second question is for Conservative candidate, Ms. Lauren. It's often challenging for business, especially small business, to provide required training to their workforce, particularly if they could then lose them to another firm, which happens all too often in our community. Again, if, uh, if elected, what will you do personally to help small business grow, businesses to grow sustainably in Whistler Sea to Sky? One of the biggest challenges that employers have is keeping and retaining employees. As an accountant who's been hiring students and training them only to you lose them, I understand that all too well. One of the things that I think is important is understanding what the workers are looking for. If you're looking at a young workforce, which is exactly what I've been looking for, we have to make modifications to how we attract and keep those employees by giving them in the incentives to stay. A flexible work schedule. We have allow our staff to work 160 hours in four weeks. I don't care when they work them. So if they want to work four tens and take every weekend as a long weekend, that's fine with us. We make those modifications. There's a section of the Tax Act that allows employers to provide daycare for their staff members. It usually only applies to large companies because those staff members get daycare tax-free. But in order for small businesses to achieve that, 
I'd like to go into Ottawa and say, hey, can we set, change this section of the Tax Act to allow groups of companies to provide daycare for their employees? That again will help us keep those re employees. The other thing that I think is difficult for small business is that they're trying to find people, yet the government says that there are too many people on unemployment insurance, or now it's called employment insurance, to allow us to have more temporary foreign workers or anyone else that we could hire. Well, maybe we shouldn't make it so nice to stay on EI and actually make it so that it's better for people to work than be on unemployment insurance. So those are just some of the ideas that we have that we've implemented ourselves and through the Chamber of Commerce, we've been able to attract a lot of employees that hopefully stay with us. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Weiler, um, would you care to review? Would you like me to record? Sure, maybe you can. Okay. It's often challenging for business, especially small business, to provide required training to their workforce, particularly if they could then lose them to another firm, which happens all too often in our community. If elected, what will you do personally to help small business uh, to grow, businesses to grow sustainably in Whistler's Sea to Sky? Yeah, well, I think that's, your question refers specifically to, to when you have someone that, that's, um, a person moving here from abroad that's working, that, that is sponsored through the visa process, and then after they're through the process, they're, um, they're moving on to, to another job. And I know a lot of businesses have, have come to me and talked about some of their, their frustrations with that. Um, so that's, that's something I would, I would look at to see if we can find a way that the, the, the business that's going to be getting the employee after, afterwards, there might be something that that they can um, somehow reimburse the company that's sponsoring that visa process. Um, and I think more, more broadly, when we're talking about growing business throughout the Sea to Sky, we've, we've lowered the small business tax rate from 11 to 9%. And we really wanna be incentivizing um, the growth of more, more businesses. And so we're gonna do that by lowering incorporation rates, uh, making it, um, providing more financing for entrepreneurship and lowering credit card swipe fees, among other things. Thank you. Mo, back to you. Thanks, okay. Perfect. It feels uncomfortably like a game show sometimes, doesn't it, really? Like, and now on to round two. Uh, but this is where it comes to you. So, uh, as mentioned, we, uh, you can ask, write questions at the back. We've got a couple of chairs there, right at the very back with uh, paper and pen. Please remember, direct it to whom you want to have an answer, and if you want someone to rebut, add that name as well. You can come down to the microphone or you can use Slido. So as you can see on the screen, you go to, you type in on your smartphone uh, browser, slido.com, it'll immediately come up. If you need uh, wireless, jump on the arts with Sir Guest uh, wireless there. And then the access code for this particular event is ACM. So uh, it's really, it's quite a great tool. You're able to see other questions coming up. Uh, Michelle's gonna manage that over there. But I invite any question to the microphone. I'll try and cycle through if there's Slido and if there's uh, printed questions. I have a couple of those in front of me already. But if there's, oh, there's, if, does anybody wanna come to the mic or should we start off with the shy? Okay. All right. Oh, wow. Quite a few, that's excellent. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I will start with the first one I received. This is directed solely to Dana Taylor. You're gonna wanna listen. This was well thought out. Uh, bear with me. The federal government has approved the environmental assessment for the wood fiber LNG project with Minister of Finance Bill Morneau stating, as Canada transitions to a cleaner future, our government will continue to support projects that have the potential to meet our energy needs while helping more people get ahead. Wood fiber LNG along with LNG Canada are prime examples of how economic growth, environmental protection, and partnerships with indigenous peoples can come together to create good, well-paying middle-class jobs, end quote. Opponents of the project state that an LNG plant in Howe Sound will increase fracking in Northeast BC and worsen climate change, with federal and provincial subsidies now worth over $500,000 per job to prop up a fossil fuel project that isn't financially viable. Wood fiber LNG is ignoring international safety standards and practices and will damage Howe Sound's fragile environment and wildlife. Do you support or oppose the wood fiber LNG project and why? With what, and also what actions are you willing to take as an MP in support of your position? Two minutes. 
Okay. This is where you come into all of this. Do you support or oppose the wood fiber LNG project and why and what actions are you willing to take as an MP in support of that position? Uh, first of all, I, uh, just like I did two years ago when I ran for the provincial uh, election, I still oppose the LNG plant at wood fiber. Nothing has changed. The approval process referred to, uh, well, may have been approved, is deeply flawed. And that's been identified a number of quarters, uh, including the National Energy Board, as well as the safety evaluation system. The, the, the Liberal government continues to pro provide exemptions for the plant on a number of levels, most recently uh, changing the designation of the vessels that transport the gas from transport vessels to local, or pardon me, uh, floating storage units is the new term. All, all of which also ignores the fact that um, the, the parking area for refueling those uh, eventual tankers would be in English Bay. Uh, there are some 16 sites been identified for that purpose. West Vancouverites are only learning that three of them are just off their coastline, Lighthouse Park being one of them. There is not a thing attractive about this. The, the, the support for the jobs is indicated, uh, uh, and the cost of those support indeed uh, refutes, the, or, or at least indicates the fact that this is an industry not worth supporting, not worth subsidizing, should be got rid of as soon as possible. Pull the subsidies on, on, on both the, the job subsidies, pull the subsidies on, on electricity, it will die a natural death. It will go away on its own. Now, as far as the deal with the indigenous folks, with the Squamish nation, the deal is they get the land regardless. At the end of the day, they still get, they get the land. So it's good all around for them. Uh, they, they take title back for property that they should have had in any case. So there's nothing good about it. And as far as doing something in Ottawa about it, I'm not sure not anything will be necessary. If get rid of the subsidies, get rid of the support, it will die a natural death. The Malaysian gentleman who owns the thing will go home and we'll never see him again. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. All right, let's uh, go to Carolyn at the microphone. No, you're good. It's live. Yep, that's great. not only learn the truth, um, but act on the reconciliation. And what I mean by this is what assistance is available whereby First Nations, nonprofits, community groups, and smaller municipalities can work to implement recommendations and actions. We, I was shocked earlier this year on behalf of the Hassan Women's Center to look out to see whether there were some resources or assistance to help that organization embrace. Okay. We've, you've got the question. You've asked the question. We'll have to go to the answer. So, okay. can you just that question part that was you just yeah. said? Can you repeat that? What and then we'll. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So. Right. We're going to go to Patrick and then Dana. Uh, Canada's relationship with First Nations is the most important relationship that we have. Um, Personally, I, I, I come from an Aboriginal law background. I've worked for a number of First Nations throughout the province, including the Squamish First Nation. Uh, we really need to get re reconciliation right um, before we move ahead. And that really first comes with being able to reconcile or to, to really grapple with a lot of the harms that were done to First Nations throughout our history, everything from, from residential schools um, to, to dealing with a really painful colonial past for a lot of First Nations. Um, I was fortunate to participate in a program put on by a group called uh, CIA, which is a group where, where, where First Nations are able to, um, to explore and recount their history from living in residential schools with, with settler people. Um, and I participated in the carving of a ceremonial totem pole called the Reconciliation Pole. 
I think it's really important that we create opportunities like this so people can understand what's, what's actually taken place, um, and then we can move forward. It's, it's also kind of a cathartic experience for a lot of First Nations that I've talked to. Um, so for, for me, if I'm elected, I'm going to look forward to, to creating more opportunities like that. I know that specific program the federal government funded, to, uh, working specifically with the, the um, Seychelles Nation. Um, and I actually had a meeting uh, yesterday with the, the, the chief and council from the Seychelles. So I'd like to explore what kind of opportunities we have to do that in other parts of the riding. Um, what type of opportunities there might be to actually uh, work with all three First Nations that we have in this riding. Um, there's been a f fabulous way of First Nations working together as part of the, the Olympic Games to, to set up the Squamish Little Walk Cultural Center. Um, and for me, if I'm elected, I'm going to look to more opportunities where we can both be able to